Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N Y. And the second word is and, spelled A N D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first coincidence miracle today is from two male friends. Uh, they have a history together of asking God to send St. Anthony to help them find lost articles. Uh, they've been doing this for several years with great success. They tell us that when they ask God to send St. Anthony to help find lost items, they usually have rapid success. And they were panicking recently because one of their daughters had misplaced or lost or got stolen her bank debit card, and she was in a state of panic. Um, and so they asked, the daughter asked the father to please help find, because she knew the story about St. Anthony. So the father called his friend, and they both asked God to please not only send St. Anthony to help find this, uh, and to quell their daughter's fear and anxiety, but to please also allow this story to glorify and magnify God among other people. In other words, uh, like Psalm 105 says, we're supposed to praise and honor and glorify God for miracles. In other words, when we notice miracles, we're supposed to tell people about them because then that helps people believe in God. If God is giving us a lot of miracles and we never tell anybody, then that's why the world doesn't believe in God. So, so when you have a miracle, please publicize it. And that's what they asked. They asked that this would get broadcasted. And they sent the story to me so that I could broadcast it. Um, and, you know, they're not glorifying St. Anthony. It's just that in history, people have been known to ask God to send St. Anthony to find things. And I'm very familiar with that because my name is Anthony. Uh, and there's many, many stories about that. Uh, well, uh, the, the story turned out really well because they said as soon as they asked God to do this, it didn't take but 30 seconds, and their daughter called, and she had found her debit card almost immediately. So I guess this encourages everybody out there, if you are looking for lost items, ask God to send St. Anthony to help you. That way you'll know you're asking God and you're getting your gift from God. One day this past summer, while I was passing out cards at a local park, uh, I came upon two women and handed them a card, and they, they looked at me stunned, and they said they were flabbergasted that I just came by and gave them a card about miracles and books about miracles, because they said they were sitting there debating pros and cons and evidences or no evidences of is there really a God or not, 
and does God communicate with us or not? And while they're doing this debating, if God is God exists or not, and if he does respond to people's questions, they, they know about the lives of many saints. You know, were those true, true stories or were they just made up? And here I come by and give them a card about miracles. So they, they were happy this happened, but they said they were just totally flabbergasted and amazed, the perfect timing. So they asked me a lot of questions and they asked me, how do I know that God really exists? Um, and and I, they know I've been doing this for 50 years now and wrote two books. Uh, and, you know, I found that God was real 50 years ago when I was very young. And uh, so they asked for evidence. So I, I gave them a couple of pieces of evidence uh, and then an amazing thing happened. But one of the things from our books, if you read our books, or you go to our website, you'll notice the following stories. I'm just going to comment briefly on them. I told them a couple of stories. Like one of them I told was one night I got inspired by God to write a letter to somebody who was having heart surgery. And I sat down and I asked God to inspire me, give me the words to write. I didn't know what to write to somebody having heart surgery. So I got inspired to write spe specific words. And as soon as I finished writing the statement that he inspired me to write, as soon as that happened, the record player in the living room went out all by itself. There was nobody there. And the record player played the words on the record were the exact same words that I was just inspired to write. So a quick summary is, I asked God what to write. He inspired me what to write. When I finished writing it on the note I was sending to the hospital, the record player went on all by itself. God had to make the power source make that all happen. And the words being sung on this record from the, the monks at Western Priory was creating me a new heart, O oh God, which is what I had just written in the letter. And the next story I told him about was we we were celebrating a holiday uh, at our house one day. We had a lot of people. It was Thanksgiving holiday. And during the day, we decided to play poker, and we weren't gambling for money. We used toothpicks, and I supplied the toothpicks. But in the process, some people started debating and arguing. They didn't believe there was a God. How can you be sure there's a God? And so I got inspired to stop the commotion, and I said, look, let's deal God a hand, and let's see what happens. There was an empty chair there. I said, we'll just deal it. We were playing poker, uh, seven-card stud. And uh, I said, just let's see what happens, okay? We'll give God a chance to show us he's, he's real or not. So they agreed, finally. They were concerned for a while about getting struck by lightning. But eventually they said, okay, let's see what happens. So we dealt the hand, and obviously the empty chair where God was apparently sitting uh, won the hand. And turns out that he wound up getting four sevens. Now, if you know, you've been listening to this show, three sevens is God's number and this particular empty chair got four sevens. So I told these people that story, and in the process I said, you know, probably you, in, you invited somebody to come here with you today, and they didn't come, and they said, how did you know that? They got flabbergasted. I said, I, I didn't know it. I just got inspired to say that to you. And they said, well, that was very spot on because you're right. We did invite someone to come. They never showed up. We just called them to follow up, and they said, they were having trouble getting here, but they just jumped into their car just now, and they'll be here shortly, and we'll be certainly telling them uh, the story about your book when they arrive. Our next story is from someone who asked a question. They said that they went off to help a, a relative. Uh, apparently, it was a, an hour drive to get to where they were going to help a relative. They spent the whole day helping this relative tidy up and clean things and move things around because the relative wasn't well, had an illness, and needed help. And all day long, the relative was not happy, was argumentative, was negative, uh, didn't seem happy that they came, uh, got into a couple of arguments. So they really had a terrible day. They were trying to help somebody and felt like it was totally a lost cause. And so they drive their hour back home and they said they noticed just before they pulled into their driveway that a car coming toward them had three sevens on the license plate. And their question was, is that a sign or a clue that God was pleased with them? And my resounding answer is yes, yes, yes. Uh, not only has this happened to me many times in my life, but I've met many people. I have I've lost count of how many people have seen a holy number right at their driveway, either as they're pulling out to go on an errand, uh, an errand of mercy to help somebody, or as they're getting home after a long, 
arduous, hard day like this one for this particular person. So I can tell you a very resounding yes. If you see holy numbers at the conclusion or the beginning of a mission you're on where you think you're doing something for God, that is God confirming. And you'll find in the Bible, if you go to, um, uh, let's see, Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 20. You'll find where it says right in the Bible that God does these kinds of things for his disciples and his apostles and his friends. He shows signs and wonders to them to confirm that they are doing his will and they are his friends. So that's in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 20. Our next story is, uh, again, one of those times during the summer where I was passing out cards at the beach. And it was the uh, beginning of the summer where the college people were uh, out of college now and celebrating at the beach. Uh, this is a new story, although it's a repeat in a type of story like many of the other ones. There were like 10, 10 college students, age group, somewhere around 20 to 23 years old, uh, about 10 of them. Uh, I was passing out a card to a couple of them and a couple of big bruisers, obviously football players, uh, that were part of the team ran over and, and kind of rudely said to me, okay, buddy, what religion are you trying to convert us to? We are right now all the same religion and we all go to the same church. And so what religion are you trying to get us to join after you make us leave our church? <laughs> and I guess they've been approached by people, but he was annoyed with if somebody was going to be doing that. Fortunately for me, that's not what I do. So I said, no, that's not my purpose. My purpose is that I became a friend of God when I was 30 years old, and I've been a, a friend of God for all these years, and I've noticed an average of three miracles a day in my life. So my mission is just to try to help people to become a friend of God. That's all I'm trying to do. And I tell them in my books, in my free website, it doesn't cost anybody, it's a, a free website. I tell them how I became a friend of God and how I get miracles every day and how I still go out on missions and do things that I think God wants me to do. And so they became delighted and interested in that. And they, they, you know, they were happy I wasn't trying to change their religion. I told them I just wanted to help people become a friend of God and they can ask God, their own friend, which, which religion they should be practicing or not. And so in the process of answering a lot of questions, I left them with three thoughts. I said, look, uh, look in the book of Luke chapter 10. If you read Luke chapter 10, it shows you that there's only one thing necessary. So the Bible tells you there's only one thing necessary. It's in the book of Luke chapter 10. And John 14, John chapter 14 says, God will teach you everything. So if you know God's going to teach you everything, then you certainly want to be his friend. Um, and John 17 says that God said a prayer for you before you were born. And James chapter 1, James chapter 1 says you can ask God anything you want and he'll answer you. So you might want to jot this down. Just Google the title of our book, which is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Again, Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. And then tell people to read the Bible, Luke chapter 10, John chapter 14, John 17, and James chapter 1. One more time. Google Luke chapter 10, John 14, John 17, and James chapter 1. And Google our book titled Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. And all of that will be enough to convince almost everybody that you could become God's friend in less than an hour. It's that simple. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.